Scientists continue to debate whether ancient Mars was warm and wet or cold and dry, but the evidence suggests that life was a possibility in both. So the next question is, how could it have gotten here? The obvious places to look are points of impact on the Earth. So I'm taking to the sky to get a closer look at the most famous crater in the U.S. Meteor crater to understand the phenomenon of something actually hitting the Earth. And the man to help me understand that is Dante Loretta. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Josh. Dante is the director of the University of Arizona's Southwest Meteorite Center. And he tells me the most plausible theory to explain how life could have gotten from Mars to Earth is by hitchhiking inside a meteorite. Well, on average, we pick up about 30,000 tons of debris a year from outer space. The meteorites going into the atmosphere, mostly dust, and that gets, that gets completely destroyed by its atmospheric passage. But if the meteor is large enough, it can create a huge crater, and that's what Dante is taking me to see. Wait, this is a meteor crater. It's amazing, isn't it? It's huge. It's about a mile in diameter. I had no idea it was that big. Yeah, 550 feet deep. Yeah, the object that struck the Earth to make that crater was uh, almost a billion tons in mass. Formed 50,000 years ago, this massive crater was made when a meteor crashed into the Earth with the force of 20 megatons of TNT. That's equivalent to the largest atomic weapon in the U.S. today. If you consider the age of the Earth is four and a half billion years, yeah. you know, something like this uh, occurs on Earth every 100,000 years or so. Roughly 1,000 meteor craters have been found on the Earth. This one is the best preserved. So in terms of what I'm seeing here, I would see more than this on the surface of Mars. These are extremely common on the surface of Mars. Same size? Oh, uh, much bigger. In fact, Mars has the biggest impact crater in the solar system. The Hellas Impact Basin is the largest of hundreds of thousands of craters on Mars. They were created an estimated four billion years ago, during a period called the Late Heavy Bombardment, when Mars, located on the edge of an asteroid belt, was battered by meteorites. You can fit two billion meteor craters inside of it. Just no. Space wait, wait, hold on, two million of these? Two million meteor would, craters. Would fit inside the Hellas Crater on Mars. That's right. Although the Hellas Crater is an impressive 1,243 miles wide and nearly four miles deep, what I'm looking for is evidence that one of Earth's craters may have been caused by a piece of ancient Mars carrying life. So if something was alive, if some extreme life form was on the planet Mars 3.9 billion years ago, and it happened to get shot into space, it could have come towards Earth. Yeah, there's a natural delivery mechanism to transfer uh, any sort of biological organism between Mars and Earth, if it can survive inside of a rock. It's pretty incredible to think that a meteorite can make the trip from Mars to Earth. But Dante says he has a friend with evidence to prove it. I'm on a quest to discover if life on Earth could have come from ancient Mars. I've learned that organisms known collectively as extremophiles could have existed on the red planet. But Mars is tens of millions of miles away. So how did they get to Earth? Professor Dante Loretta suggests meteorites may have played an important role in bringing life to our planet. He's taking me to meet Marvin Kilgore, the curator for the University of Arizona's Southwest Meteorite Center, who's dedicated to finding them. If anybody in the world can show you how to find a meteorite, it's this guy. Howdy, Marvin. Josh. Meteorite sniffing dog? Yeah, we're trying to teach him how to sniff them out. <laughs> Marvin's research has taken him around the globe looking for meteorites that can help the scientific community further their understanding of life on Earth. So you actually search for meteorites full time? Pretty much, yeah. Marvin tells me meteorites are extremely rare. In fact, if you piled every meteorite that was ever found on a scale, it would weigh less than the world's production of gold in one year. But those that have been recovered provide precious scientific information that can't be found anywhere else on Earth. Is it all right if, we, if I give it a shot? Pretty simple. Yeah. Most meteorites contain significant amounts of iron and nickel. So Marvin has rigged a specially designed metal detector to the back of his ATV to help with the search. Searching for meteorites. I got a beep over here. All right, stop right there. I got a good beep. 
It sounds like it could be fairly good size. Yeah? On the surface. Oh. Okay, you just dig it just like this. Dig around it. And scrape it out with your hands like that. Oh, it's not a meteorite. What is that? <laughs> yeah, all right, false alarm, so, martian calm. Oh, Stop the press, we found a piece of junk. Marvin tells me that he sometimes searched a location for months, even years, before a meteorite actually turns up. Not a meteorite. But all metals worth $330 a ton today, so, <laughs> hey. Hey, if we could find another 15,000 of these. You never know what you're gonna dig up. up. After an hour of finding nothing but trash, our luck finally improves. Hey, Josh, come on over. There looks like a big, a big target here. See, this one's so big, you can't hardly pinpoint it. Oh, wow. Go ahead and break all that out in a big pile. Music to your ears, isn't it, Marvin? That's right. What do you got? Oh, my god. Is that it? It's a meteorite. It's a meteorite. It's a real I'd meteor. say that's a meteorite. You can feel, feel how dense that is. Yeah. That is really heavy. The high iron content which helped us find this meteorite also distinguishes it from ordinary earth rocks. This definitely did not come from Earth. It's this definitely is definitely a meteorite. Definitely a meteorite. And is there any way to know if that's from Mars? This is definitely not from Mars. You gotta remember, of the 50,000 or so known meteorite fragments, only about 35 or 40 of them are from Mars. 35 to 40, period. That's right. Marvin explains that unlike the meteorite we found, the iron content in Martian meteorites is much lower. This means they're much harder to find. This one next to it. And this is a piece of Mars. And this is a, a piece that, that fell in Nigeria, and I believe that was 1911. I'm now touching a piece of Mars. That's right, holding a piece of Mars in your hand. Few people in the world have got to do that. I still can't believe I'm holding a piece of Mars. That's pretty just, amazing. That's, that is amazing. Proving a meteorite is from Mars used to be a pretty difficult task. But now scientists can test meteorites found on Earth by comparing the gases inside with samples taken from the red planet by NASA's Viking mission in 1976. Could something living be hitching a ride inside there? Well, that's a really interesting question, Josh, because in 1996, a group of scientists published a paper that suggested exactly that. On August 7, 1996, President Bill Clinton announced that fossilized primitive life may have been found inside a meteorite believed to have come from Mars. Today, Rock 84001 speaks of the possibility of life. This Martian rock became extremely controversial. Dante's taking me to his lab at the University of Arizona to show me why. Josh, this is the meteorite that made headlines in 1996, named Allen Hills 84001, or ALH 84001. It's a chunk of the Martian crust, which is very exciting. Okay. Some scientists thought that they had found evidence for fossil life on Mars. Dated at 4.5 billion years old, this rock got shot into space 16 million years ago, and is thought to have landed on Earth roughly within the last 13,000 years. The fact that this could be an indicator of life on ancient Mars was a pretty big deal. So the initial reaction to seeing this was, that's not an indicator of life, that's an indicator for a place where life could exist. That's exactly right. The idea that life could have originated on another planet, I believe would be the biggest scientific revolution since Copernicus moved us outside of uh, an Earth-centric solar system. But then you're saying that in time we've learned that this may not have been the case. In terms of their original evidence, you've got the carbonates, you've got liquid water, you've got organic molecules, and you've got these interesting features that a microbiologist has told you looks a lot like the kinds of bacteria that she looks at every day. Okay. They had four lines of evidence, and they said any one of those alone was not sufficient for life. But if you had all four of them together, then it was definitive proof for life on Mars. Dante explains that since we first heard about ALH 84001 and the theory of life on Mars, three of its four lines of evidence have been proven to be wrong. So given that this theory has since collapsed, does that mean that looking for life on Mars or this, this announcement was a bust? Absolutely not. The announcement of Allen Hills 8401 created the entire field of astrobiology and really focused everybody's attention on the possibility of life on Mars.